Hello guys, in this video let's talk about database structure and I will give you four tips like a checklist, how to check or what questions to ask to check if your database structure is good enough. Because what happens quite often, you build the first version of the database, here you have tables and columns and it works fine but then in a few months client wants to change something and then you realize that you made some fundamental mistakes in relationships or columns or naming of the tables which is now hard to refactor because you need to change half of your code with new requirements of the client. Sounds familiar? I see that happening all the time, including in my own projects, including the cases where I am the client myself. So yeah, to avoid that, I started to apply simple checklist after first version of the database is finished and I will give it to you in this video. It used to be a three-step checklist, but then I added number four, which is rarely talked about. I will talk about it at the end of this video. And the example of this database will be for one of the latest demo projects on this channel. For that video, I demonstrated Spidey Query Builder, so there there's a list of posts, there's users, and there's also dashboard for total posts. So nothing really fancy, and this is a pretty simple project. But quite often on this channel, I'm trying to demonstrate simple projects because I want to show the concept, which would be probably applicable for bigger projects as well. And also I will admit that part of that project was vibe coded by AI, but this may be exactly the angle. So how do we evaluate? and check that AI generated database structure is good enough. So let's dive in. Tip number one is visualize. There are a lot of tools to visualize to create the database schema visually from the database. My personal preference is MySQL Workbench where all I need to click is database reverse engineer or command R on my MacBook and then I choose the database. I connect to local host on my Laravel herd then it shows me the list of databases and then I choose a specific Spotty Query Builder. I go continue, continue. Then you may also choose which objects to show or not to show on the database schema, but I just click continue, close, and this is our database structure visually. Of course, there are system tables which I don't really care about, like cache, like jobs, cache logs, and stuff from Laravel, like migrations. But just from this, I can evaluate the database schema visually, which is much easier to understand than just the set of migrations or SQL client list or any other form of viewing the database. So this is kind of bird eye view where you can zoom in and zoom out and immediately maybe notice that something is off, some column is missing, some database relationship is not correct. Then you can of course move things around so I don't care about failed jobs or job batches. So then this moves here for example, then also password reset tokens are irrelevant, then users move closer. So you can move things around, you can of course print it out if you wish. So yeah, the main tables go down to these six tables in my case users and posts and categories. Then you can zoom in on those and see which columns do you have and other relationships. So tip number one is visualize your database. It may be of course much more complicated than just six tables in your case. So you can zoom in on some part of the database or specific section, it depends. So for example, in this case, I would question the column categories color. Do I really need that color or not? Or for example, user roles description. Do I need that description? Probably not. Or for example, I see categories one too many. So post category ID is the relationship. And I constantly need to ask myself what may change in the near future. That's the general question you should ask yourself throughout all that process of database evaluation. So what if posts may have multiple categories? So maybe at this point, I would realize that the relationship should be many to many instead. But such visualization is a huge, massive help in my opinion to make early decisions and just see the database at a glance. And as a side note, our goal in evaluating the database is not just technically evaluate the relationships, but also come up with set of questions for the client or for yourself if you are the client. Like what would happen? Is it okay? Is it required to have a category for the post? Or can post have many categories? So just in a human language, 
from database first structure, you should come up with a set of questions like business logic questions, which then would turn into database changes decisions. Tip number two is to seed realistic data. So seeders and factories, it's kind of a no brainer, really simple concept, but important point is not just seeders with factory with fakers, but instead of fake data, make it more realistic. So kind of you would try to fit in the data from real world, like you would try to fit, try on the clothes in the shop, whether they fit or not. So for example, in the user seeder here, instead of using faker, we have specific users for admin, for editor, for authors. It may be totally hard-coded, it may be partially hard-coded. For example, last login may be fake like seven days from now. So it's a mix of realistic and fake data. And then on top of that, just randomly 25 users with regular factory. But even that regular factory for users, let's take a look at that. Bio will be filled for 70%, roughly 70% of users. Avatar for 50%. So fake optional is a method for that. So even within faker library, you can get it closer to realistic data, which then will help you feel while browsing the project or browsing the database, whether the data just fits in. So you look at the data and then you see, for example, whether it should be maybe first name and last name as separate columns, or maybe, for example, you see that bio is too short, it should be text instead of varchar or vice versa. Maybe avatar should be instead Spidey Media Library instead of just one avatar, one image. So this is the example for users table. For another table for posts, we'll get back to database here and see here, demo posts with specific pretty hard coded titles, contents, and the data like you would publish that yourself via admin panel or filament or whatever. And you can also ask AI to do that for you to generate. This was partially done by AI with some manual changes on top. But see, it's not faker. And then for each of that array item, we have post create with pretty realistic posts. And then again, you evaluate whether real data fit in those columns, those column types, sizes and constraints. Also, you may play around with factories themselves or for example, states. So there's general post factory, then there's published draft or scheduled. So if we open post factory here, this is the general accept and content. And this is, for example, you may play around with length of paragraphs or whatever, and then add published draft and other modifiers. But yeah, my point is tip number two is seed realistic data. If it's possible, ideally, you should even get the data from the client like in CSV or any other example. Or for example, if the client wants you to create the website similar to website X, just get the data from website X and try to fit in your new database, whether it would fit. Tip number three is performance testing, stress testing, try to seed a lot of data. And this is where I uncomment another seeder, post view seeder, which is this database table called post views. It's kind of analytics tables, also, by the way, generated with AI, so it's not real data, but again, pretty realistic IP address, user agents, which take a lot of space on their own, then operating systems and quite a lot of columns in that table. And then the goal is to try to write SQL queries or eloquent queries directly if you prefer to see if that database table structure is good enough. Do you have enough indexes? Or maybe you should restructure that into multiple tables. So basically stress test and performance test the tables that you would feel get a lot of data. So in here I see that a million rows. So if I go to post view seeder, these are agents kind of semi fake. Again, it's pretty realistic. So it's not faker library. And then it also is optimized by chunking. So there's batch and there's for loop for batches. So it's not a million rows at once. It's like taking two to three minutes in total on my local MacBook Pro to seed it all. And by the way, the source of this project will be on GitHub and I will link that in the description below. It's free, no membership required. So you will be able to play around yourself if you want. But basically we have that post view table filled with a million of rows. And then let's go to analytics page 
and let's try to build some eloquent queries or SQL queries and see how fast it is. So here I am in my controller and I have post view where count. So I have three count queries, then get top posts, get recent views, and you can load the page and you can feel that it is a bit slow. But how slow exactly? Let's install Laravel debug bar with dash dash dev, of course I should do that. And now if we refresh our page, we will see SQL queries at the bottom and we can evaluate the speed. So select count where viewed at is 159 milliseconds. So this is identified as slow, I would say. But also interestingly, the same query with viewed at different value is seven milliseconds. So some kind of cache is happening, but generally I already see that the bottleneck is viewed at, which should be indexed. And let's see if we have the index on that column. And in fact, we do have the index, but I see too many indexes potentially in this database table. So I don't have the immediate solution on what can be the reason of the slowness, but potentially I see that viewed at is a bottleneck here because it's used here as well where viewed at and here. So four queries depend on that column. So maybe we should run that query with caching, for example, and then have those stats, for example, for a day refreshed once a day or once an hour, or alternatively build an archive of tables. So we use on Laravel daily a tool called Matomo. It's like Google Analytics, but open source, which you can install on your server. And I see that in their database structure, they have tables by year and by month, something like that. It's kind of a weird magic happening behind the scenes. I didn't dig deeper, but I saw database tables, separate tables for years and months. So if you feel you will have a million views every month, maybe you should have just active this month table for the last like 100k records and then offload the historical records somewhere else in separate table or even multiple tables like an archive. But yeah, all that to say is my tip is try to seed not only realistic data that I told you in tip two, but a lot of data in those tables, which will be either queried often, or you expect them to get really crowded, busy, and a lot of data. Try to simulate and stress test even before you launch the project, because quite often what I see happening is the project is launched with rainbows and butterflies. Everyone is happy. Everything is working. And then six to 12 months later, things start happening with performance issues, slowness. Then the developer is maybe gone by that time. And then someone else needs to fix performance issues. So why not try to avoid those problems from the beginning? Of course, that said, I'm not a big fan of premature optimization because on the other side of the spectrum, a lot of projects never really grow to millions of records because it may be like quick startup, quick MVP to just test the market if the project is even worth growing. So it depends on the scenario, but some quick wins may be really achieved with just trying to seed a million records in a fresh database. And now tip number four, finally, the one that I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I added it to my own checklist later because I saw a problem. Quite often with database, we're talking about building the structure, adding the data, and then select the data with queries. But we rarely talk about updating the data and deleting the data. And this is where the structure may go wrong if you don't think enough about soft deletes, nullable fields, foreign keys, and stuff like that. So for example, what would happen with your project if some category of the posts gets deleted? Is it even possible to delete a category? So on the database level, post category ID is non-nullable field, which means that the database would restrict anyone from deleting a category. Maybe that's a good thing, but maybe in your case, something may happen and the category should get deleted. Or another typical example is enums. And I have a separate video about why you should not probably use enums on the database level. So status ID of the post and database table post statuses with data of draft published and others is much more flexible if you want to add or remove more statuses in the future instead of making changes in the database structure with enum or making the changes in the code. 
Also, for example, in this case, I don't have that example, but for transactions, for example, in e-commerce, it's really important to save the historical data even if the current data is changed. So, for example, if tax rate gets changed or product price gets changed, the transaction in the past should stay with older price. So you should kind of duplicate the data and have the current data at the time, even if the future data changes. Again, in this project, I don't have that example, but I hope you see what I mean. Basically, tip number four is think about the database tables in terms of what may be deleted or edited in the future, where you should have optional foreign keys, nullable stuff, soft deletes, separate lookup tables instead of enums, and stuff like that. It's one of the myths or even memes that clients often say, we will not change that part. Yep, we developers know that that phrase doesn't age well all the time. So yeah, all that a bit long video with four tips how to evaluate your database. So to recap, visualize, seed realistic data, seed a lot of data where it needs to be seeded with a lot of data, and also think about the cases of data editing and deleting and not just creating. All this video was partially inspired by my own tweet a few months ago where I tweeted that database structure is important from the very beginning. You should spend a lot of time on that, and that tweet got almost 200 likes and a lot of engagement. So I decided to dedicate this longer video, just emphasizing how important is the database structure from the very beginning of your project. And again, to reiterate, it's not about the database that much. It's about evaluating the business logic, the business cases, and coming up with questions to your client, what may happen in the near or sometimes longer term future. And I also talk a lot about structuring databases in Laravel in one specific course on Laravel Daily, so I can recommend that. This is a text-based course updated to Laravel 12, talking about relationships, JSON columns, enums, custom fields, and other typical questions that I see online, how developers think, what they ask for, and I decided to compile it into one course, and I will link that one in the description below. That's it for this time, and see you guys in other videos.